Okay, welcome to this tutorial. In this, we're going to learn a lot of different things, really. What we're going to do is to create a composite picture. Uh, we're going to learn, first of all, a little bit about the background. So, that background is what I'm going to use, and I just want to go through how I actually created this. So, this was just took with the camera. And to get that effect, basically, what I was shooting was it was a tree outside my house. No leaves on it whatsoever, winter conditions, a um, few drops of rain on it and, and, and things like that. A few highlights coming from the sun, and that's important. And basically, what all I've done, I got a long lens, I opened up the aperture, and I switched to manual focus, and I just took a picture of the tree completely out of focus. And depending on your lens, you can get this nice bokeh effect. And I take a lot of these images to use for backgrounds, it's a great way of, you know, go to go to different scenes, try throwing the camera out of focus, and they create great backgrounds for, for your composites and things like that. Okay, so that's how I took that first of all. What we're going to actually be creating is some glass domes that we'll be hand painting, so we're going to learn how to do that. And we're also going to use um, some fairies that we're going to put inside the the actual domes inside the glass domes or sitting on the glass domes maybe and we're going to talk about getting images and copyrights and royalties as well because that's really important if we if we do uh, photography or we don't want people stealing our images and we don't want to do the same when we're creating composites or whatever so either use stock art and buy it but I'm going to show you a way to actually find a lot of things without actually paying anything so it's just if you're going to steal something steal something that's legal <laughs> and, and, and that's the way to, to go about things so we've got our background there so what I'm going to talk about now is those legal parts and we're going to go on the internet go to Google as everybody does and once we're on Google, we're going to go to Images at the top right there. So I'll click on Images. Now, we'll do a basic search. So first of all, I'm looking for pictures of fairies. I want to get PNG files if I can. And what a PNG file, if you don't know, basically has a transparent background. So I haven't got to sit there and make selections and all that. So... I'm going to type in those two words. So I'm going to type in fairies. And I'm going to type in PNG. And then we're going to press enter and we're going to search on the internet. And you can see we've got these files come up. Now some of them won't actually be PNG files. I can guarantee you that. But the next important part is a lot of these images on there are actually owned by somebody that they're copyrighted. And it's not right just to go and steal any picture. What we want to do is to filter out all the ones we can't use, basically, and filter the ones we do want. And if you look on Google, you can see it's got some uh, headings along the top there. And one of those is Tools. So I'm going to click on Tools. Now, when you click on Tools, you get these things. Called, you've got Size, Color, Type, Time, Usage Rights, More Tools. And it's, of course, Usage Rights that we want. And we want to find labelled for reuse with modification. Because we are going to modify them. Okay, and that filters out quite a lot. Now, obviously, you can go through all of these. I've already found a couple and, and downloaded the two that I'm going to use. Uh, I wonder if I can find... Another well, one's straight at the top. So this is this is the one, the one I'm going to use. And obviously you can use any. So once I'm on there, then I click view image on this part. And there's the image. And if you right click on that, you can save the image as, and you can select your folder. Where you want to save it you see I've already saved it so I'm not going to do it again and I've renamed it so you can do that straight away okay so these are free so it's public domain free for commercial use 
and it says link referral required. So you would actually put a link onto the image in that case if you used it on the internet or for that purpose. I'll only be using it for teaching purposes. So I've got licenses for that already and I've got links to the file. So you'll also find some, so let's just go back on that. I've saved that one. Uh, and actually, if we look at these other links, if we look to the right, and you'll probably find this when you search as well. That is the other image that I use. It's down there. If I click there, that's the one that I used. And if we view the image on here, there we are. We'll see that this one is free for commercial use, no attribution required whatsoever. So this one is fine to use without any worries whatsoever. And again, you would right click, save the image as, and that would allow you then to, to retrieve it when you, when you do your compositions. So if you're creating compositions, look at these images first of all. You, obviously you can buy them you can go to uh, stock art adobe have got their own system where you can sign up for there but obviously if you don't do a lot it's worth searching for free things that you can use without pain if it's free use it okay but don't steal okay there we go so that's to get your images so we can close the internet now go back to photoshop now we're not going to use our images yet, obviously I've downloaded those and I've saved those, those are the images that we're going to use. But what we're going to create now is a glass dome and we're going to give it a, a realistic look. So if we look at our layers, so if we click the layers palette and you can see we've just got the background layer. Now actually we'll, we'll have a play with the, the background first. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to duplicate the layer. So it's right click, duplicate layer, and I'll call this floor. It's a good idea to, to name to name your layers. Um, it just helps you when you're looking through when you've got lots and lots of layers there, it helps identify what's actually on there. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to change the layer mode. So where we've got the word normal on the layers palette, that is the layer mode, the blending mode. So I click on there and I select multiply. Now what multiply does is it will make it darker and it will always, when you've got a blending mode, it will affect what's below that. So if I resize this, so if I click on the move tool and make sure you've got the show transform controls ticked there, and you haven't got the auto select ticked, make sure that's off. And we just drag down from the top. And you can see, you can actually see it's blending with the image in the background and it's making this part of the image darker. And I'm going to use that just to create a darker part of the image here. So it looks like a, a bit of a floor with a backdrop there. So that's the, the floor. And although I've named that, I'm going to right click. I'm going to need to click on the tick first to confirm the resizing. I'm just going to tick and I'm going to merge that down. So it changes the background again. That's fine in this case. But we want to get used to naming layers that we work with. So now we want a new layer. We've got our background. So I'll click on new. And obviously you can use any background, but try that going out and, and taking a picture yourself and get getting the the soft focus, so it's pretty totally out of focus, and open the aperture up wild. So, so you know, depending on your lens, I shot that at about f4 or f5, I think, which is the maximum I could get on a telephoto. Use telephoto lenses. The longer the lens, the better the effect you'll get. Okay, so we've got our layer. The next thing we want is the elliptical marquee tool. So when you click on them, probably you'd have the rectangular showing first the wall. In most cases, if you hold down the mouse, you've got your other selections. So I want elliptical. Now, when I hold down the mouse and drag this, so I'm keeping the mouse button down, you'll see that it distorts. We get it, uh, ellipses and we can also get circles. To get a true circle, without letting go of the mouse button, I hold down the shift key. And when I've got the shift key down, 
but you can see with the shift key down I can resize and I get a perfect circle. Now the tip is, and this is where a lot of people make the big mistake, the big error, is they let go of the keyboard before the mouse. And if I let go of the keyboard, I'm going to keep the mouse button down. But if I do that and I move the mouse slightly, it's not going to be a circle anymore. So when I'm going to put the keyboard back down there, so I've got the shift key back down. When you uh, want to commit the actual selection, make sure that you release the mouse first. So I'll let the mouse go and then the keyboard last, just so that you keep, you keep that selection. Now on the options bar, you've got various things you've got to add to selection and whatever, but these buttons are important because we need it to be on new selection. Now it wouldn't matter when you drawed it, whichever one you'd got selected, because you'll still make the selection. But it's important now because if you want to move that, it needs to be on new selection. You don't want the move tool, you want to make sure that you, you select that. And when you put the mouse inside the selection, you'll see that symbol and you can drag the mouse and we're, we're just going to basically put it slap bang in the middle like that so make it fairly large when you draw it and you can get it in the middle you can see when it's in the middle because you get that line that appears showing that you're in the correct place for the center of the image okay so now we've got that selection we actually want to save this selection and to do that, we go to Select, and we go to Save Selection. So it Select, Save Selection. Because I don't want to keep redrawing that. We're going to be using it quite a lot. So you've got Channel, and you've got New. You've got the document. We want it within this document. So you don't change that. Don't change the channel. We want a new channel. We want the channel to be called, we'll call it Circle. Okay, so let's save the selection. So now the beauty of that is, let's just deselect that. Anytime I want that back, I can just go. There's various ways, so if you're an expert on Photoshop, you may know other ways. I'm not going to go over those. Because if you're a beginner, it all gets confusing. So we're going to use this method. We go to Select, and we click on Load Selection. And then we say, on the channel there, we click and we select circle. So you go to the channel and select circle. Click on OK and it will come back exactly in the same place, same location, which is what we want. OK, so we're on the layer one. There's nothing on there whatsoever, just the selection. That's nothing physical actually on the layer yet. So what I want to do with this is first of all, select your foreground color, make sure that it's black. So drag down to the bottom left hand corner, click on OK. Then select your bucket tool. So you've got various things on there. If you haven't got the bucket tool, then you need to go through the options. And I'm just going to go through this. If we just click on here, you will see other selections on there. And you will see edit toolbar. Now if you click on edit toolbar, basically on the right hand side are tools that you haven't got on this side of the screen so you haven't actually got on your toolbar so if you're missing any tool go to this and look at the extra tools on there and basically I would come down to the you can see they've got letters on there so if I wanted to add anything I'd come down on the left hand side and I'd say right it's got the letter C on there so there's additional tools there and if I wanted this one obviously you'd be looking for the bucket tool but I've already got it so you would look at the letter, find the letters on here, so you're keeping them in the right groups, which is much easier. You can mix them up, but it's best to do it this way. So I'm looking at the group C, and I say, oh, there's another two here, so I could drag that one and put it with that group. So I drag it there, and I put it there, and if I wanted that one as well. These are two that I don't use very often, but it doesn't hurt to have them there. So, so you can edit any of the things that you haven't got, such as these uh, tools there. Now, it might be that I want those at some stage, so I'll look down for the use. Have I got any of the use? I don't think I have, have I now, so I can't see any use on there. So we haven't got any of these tools. So we can actually click 
we'll go down the bottom there and I click these and I'm just going to put them as a separate group there we are, we've got the rectangle tool there now took some finding so I'll have the rounded one and I'll put that below that one and this one so you can see I'm adding tools all the time this is another use selection so I'll we'll put that there and this one the custom check tool so I do use those occasionally so it's nice to have them there these others I don't really need at the moment so that's how you edit your toolbar I'm going to click on done and the, now you will have those tools available you can see all those I've, I've added there so I've only shown you that if you didn't have the bucket tool that's how you get it so I've got the bucket tool and that's on the G selections so you would look for the G selections and I click on that and I'm just going to click inside of this selection so there we are it took us a long time to get there but we're there so that is going to be our glassstone it's saying black why is it black I can't see through it well we'll see why later on but while I've still got the selection there what I want to do is to create an effect on this so if we go down to the bottom of the layer uh, the layer palette there you can see the word the letters FX and if I click on there what I want is a uh, inner glow there we go now these will be basically on any setting so I'm going to type them back to where there was so on the inner glow we've got these different effects you've got opacity noise we don't want to put the noise up I'm going to put the opacity up all the way to start with and the size Make sure the technique is on softer as well. Size, I'm going to increase. And you can see now I'm getting this effect. I'm going to click anti aliased. I'll just make the line smoother. And then you've got things like jitter and range and whatever. So you can see you can. Now we want the range to be. Probably around 50%. Doesn't got to be exact. So I've got mine on 48. I've got the size. It depends on your image because I've got a lot of pixels on this. It depends on what how big your background image is. But I've got 250. So you can adjust that. So it's something similar to that. We want that to be quite large. The choke needs to be off completely because you can see what the choke does okay now I may just take the opacity down just a tiny little bit just a tiny bit there we go that's fine okay so that's the first stage and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to the paintbrush tool and I'm going to change the color the foreground color to white now I need to change the brush on this. So we need under the general brushes we want a soft round brush. Now I've talked about changing size with the brush many times, but I'll just tell you I use the keyboard. So next to your enter key, you've got the two parentheses brackets uh, to just to the left of your enter key, return key. And if you tap those you will see that it changes so the two brackets will change the size of the brush now what I want to do with this is to take the flow of the brush down to about 24 percent I'm going to work towards the top left of the circle I'm going to click once twice and I'm just building this up one click at a time To get this effect and then I'm going to make the brush smaller I'm going to move to around this area and I'm going to click quite a few times just to make that really bright there we go so you can see the effect now 
on crea creating uh, a highlight on the, on the circle. Now the next thing you're going to do is to change the layer mode of this. So I'm going to change the layer mode. So where it says normal, I'm going to change it to screen. Now what screen will do will hide all the black area. So you see now, I've got quite a realistic looking dome already. And I'm just going to add an extra effect to this. So I'm going to create a new layer. So I'll click on the new layer button. So the new layer is at the top. And I'm going to create some colour highlights on this. So I've still got the brush on. I'm going to use the brush in a moment. But the important thing to remember is I've still got that selection there. If you'd lost the selection, then you could go back to select and remember your load selection and then select the, the channel for the circle. But we've still got it there at the moment. And we want it there. And I'm going to create, I'm going to make the brush quite large, about that size. And we're going to be painting with the edge of the brush. Uh, I'm going to change the foreground colour. And I'm looking at this bar down here. We're going to be using a little bit of the, the prime colours that go down there. So red, blue, green, yellows. Okay, so I'm right at the top and I've clicked right in the corner. So I'll drag the slider to the top, click right in the top right hand corner, click on OK. And I've got this big brush and I've got the flow down quite low. I'm just going to drag. I'm just going to paint just over the edge slightly like that. And then I'm going to change the colour. So I'm coming down my slider. I'm just going to drag this down to the blues. Click on OK. And I'm going to do the same again there. And then I'll change the colour again. I'm going to drag that slider down to the greens. Just a couple of clicks and change it again. I'm going to drag the slider down to the yellows. Okay, a couple of clicks. I might put a, a bit of orange in between that just to merge them two colours up. So we'll come down to the orange. And we'll just okay, so we can create that effect. Now, when we've done that, I'm going to change the layer mode from normal to soft light. And that's just soften the old effect. And then what I'm going to do is to go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Click on OK. Basically, we need to look at the image when we're doing this. I don't want too strong. I want those colours to, to sort of soften out. It just gives a little bit. Okay, I think that's the effect that I want. It just gives that little bit of roundness to, to the ball with those colours on. And you can always take the opacity down whatever you want and there we go so that's on soft light let's just have a look what screen does yeah, screens a similar effect so I might use screen in this case and I can just again adjust this there we go So you create any emphasis on that by just changing the opacity of the layer, clicking on the opacity there and dragging the slider. I don't want it too strong, I want quite a soft effect. So you could use soft light or screen. Those would probably be the two the two better ones to use. So there's our ball. And what we're going to do with this is to group these two layers together. So I'm going to click on layer 2 and hold down the shift key and click on the layer below. So that's click on the top layer, 
hold down the shift key, click on layer two. Now you see I haven't actually named these yet, but that's okay because I'm gonna put them in a group now. So with those selected, we go down to the group. So I'll create a new group, and because we've got those selected, it will put the two layers inside the folder. So it's inside the group. And I'm gonna click in there, double click, and give it a name. So I'm gonna call that dome. That's our glass dome. Okay, so that's part one done. Now what I'm gonna do with that, I'm actually going to go back to the background layer, first of all, because what we're going to do now is to create another layer. We're gonna get one of our fairies and, and put it inside the dome. So because I'm on this layer, when I've got the fairy and I've put it onto this image, it will come below the dome. It will be between those two layers. If I was on the top, it would come in front of the dome. So it's important to select the background first of all. So I'll go to File Open. And there's where I save the fairies. And I want this, this one. So I'll double click on that. I simply click on the move tool and because these are PNG files the backgrounds are removed so that's really nice I haven't got to do any editing on those and I'm holding down the mouse and I look at the two labels there and I want to go to this one so you can see I'm keeping the mouse button down I wouldn't let go I come on to this image and I let go of the mouse now you'll get a warning I'm gonna say don't show again click on OK and there's the fairy inside the dome. Now I do want that larger, so I'm going to click on, on the move tool. I'm going to go to select, deselect first of all. And then you can see I've got the graphic handles around the actual fairy. And I'm going to make that larger. Now you might not have to do this. I'm holding down the shift key while I'm doing this, so that keeps the proportions. And I'm going to move her inside the dome to about there. I'm going to press the enter key, or you can click the tick on the options bar either way to say yes, I've completed resizing, commit the transform, and there we go. Okay, now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to go to the dome group, I'm going to right click, and I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go to the down group, I'm going to right click and I'm going to duplicate the group and down copy, that's fine, click on OK and then what I'm going to do is I've still got the move tool on, I'm going to resize with the shift key down again and make another glass dome and I'm going to put that around there Maybe a bit lower. I might change that completely after. Press the enter key or again click the tick to do the transform. And then I'm going to bring in, I'm going to, go to file open and find the other fairy, which is the elf. Open that. Oh, and I've got the move to the line, so I just drag and I drag over to this label with the mouse down and I let go. She's going to be sitting on that wall. I'm going to make that larger. So again, resizing with the shift key down. I'm going to sit her on the ball there. It looks quite good actually. She fits that quite nice. Click on the tick. And you can see now we're building up this image. Okay. Now the next stage. See what we can do now. I'm just going to create one more glass dome. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to just have a look in here. I'm going to, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to go to this layer one inside the dome copy, and I'm going to right click and duplicate that layer. And I'm going to bring that, hold down the mouse on the layer. 
I'm going to drag it up out to the folder right to the very top. Actually, I don't want it on the top. I want it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I want it on the top. There we go. And then I'm going to move that. Resize it and make it smaller. Shift key down again. I'm going to put that there like she's looking into that. There we go. And then I'm going to right click on that layer. Duplicate that layer. And resize that one again. Okay, so I've got something like that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to crop this picture. So I click on the crop tool. Crop tool there. I'm going to draw. Oh, actually, I'm not going to draw. I'm going to drag these sides in. There we go. And then I'm going to press the Enter key to commit the crop. Make sure that the when you do that, you haven't got anything in the boxes up there. You can click clear there to make sure that there's no sizing because we don't want to resize it we just want to to crop part of the image okay now there's one last effect on that you might like it like that that's fine but I'm going to create another effect and it's also something else to learn so what I'm going to do is make sure I'm on the top layer and then I'm going to go to the adjustments so that's the, the button there and the adjustment you're going to use is this one looks like a little grid. When I put the mouse over that, it will say a color lookup. And I'm going to click on that. And you've got these different little boxes there. And we're just working with the top one. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to look down. And I want foggy night. And I'll just like that effect. Now, when we put that on, we go back to the layers. And what I'm going to do with this is change the opacity of this layer. Just a little bit. There we are. I'm getting something quite arty now. Now I just want to to actually change the overall light on this. So I'm going to click again on the adjustments, and I'm going to click on. Should we use levels? Yeah, we'll just go for levels. And I'm going to drag. To the left hand side in a bit to make it a bit darker there. I'm going to drag the middle I don't want to make it too bright because I'll lose the detail then. I'm just dragging the middle one up just to make it a bit lighter in parts. And really the effect is up to you how much you drag that. Slight adjustments. I'm probably going to go just a little bit more. There we go. Look at my layers again and go to the color lookup again. I might increase that just slightly now. There we go. So that's my completed image. And obviously, you can create all sorts of things using these techniques and uh, have a real good play. And, and see what you can come up with. So you've created all these domes and whatever. We can always take that off and you can have the colour version. You can take the levels down. So until you actually flatten the image, by going to layer flatten image, you can have any very area, any variation, sorry, of, uh, of what you've created on that. So, okay, quite a lot to learn there. And I hope it's given you inspiration to go out and create something yourself. All the best from Les Arnott.